what a fulsome introduction. That was great. Thanks, Bob. Um, and more important, uh, I want to thank you publicly for all that you do on behalf of the arts every single day. There's no better advocate for the arts in the entire country. Thanks, Bob, for everything you do. And you are ably assisted uh, this year by Bill Harper and Charles Seeger and everyone who has joined you uh, in D.C. today. I also want to add my thanks to uh, Congressman Moran for hosting this morning uh, and being uh, twice as wonderful because he's also representing uh, Louise Slaughter, who's unable to be here. We have an expression in the theater, uh, break a leg. Uh, she took that literally, uh, unfortunately. Um, and um, I, have a, um, I have some pre uh, a prepared sentence about uh, uh, Jim Moran. I'm going off of that altogether. Uh, Jim, <laughs> which is very, very dangerous, um, my staff usually wants to pull me off the stage at that point. Uh, Jim is not only a great, uh, a great friend of, of the arts, uh, he's a great, great friend personally. He is passionate, he is tireless, and um, on more than a couple of occasions, uh, he can be poetic. And um, in defense of the arts in the U.S. Congress, there is, there, is no, uh, there is no greater leader, and thank you, Jim, for all you do. Uh, we're also very lucky to have uh, Mike Simpson um, as uh, Jim's Republican counterpoint. Uh, Mike isn't here, so I won't be quite as extravagant in, uh, <laughs> uh, in his praise, but I, I hate to think of where we'd be uh, at the NEA without, uh, without Mike Simpson. He's been fantastic. I'd also like to acknowledge Jack Reed and Lisa Murkowski, uh, who do our appropriations work on the, uh, on the Senate side, uh, and who are also wonderful friends and friends of, friends of the arts. I was lucky enough to have just spent a day with Senator Reid in, uh, in Rhode Island. Um, we also have uh, Congressman uh, Guthrie and Yarmouth from, uh, from Kentucky here. I don't know what it is about Kentucky that is, uh, <laughs> that is turning out for the arts. I, uh, I love it. Um, and finally, I want to congratul uh, congratulate uh, Todd Platts, who will be formally honored a little later this morning. Uh, I was lucky enough to spend time with Todd in York, Pennsylvania which is a great example of how art does work in, in communities and neighborhoods. Um, and see firsthand how connected he is, uh, he is to the arts. And uh, he's retiring. He'll be sorely missed by, by all of us. He's been a tremendous advocate. Uh, I don't want to take up very much time, since most of you uh, heard from me yesterday. Several more of you will hear from me again this afternoon, and others will hear from me again this evening. I know that by the end of the evening, I will be tired of hearing from me. Um, but I just want to say that the real power of the NEA uh, is in our reach. We succeed only when our country's network of state arts councils, local arts agencies, and arts organizations are thriving. The NEA is fundamentally a network of distributed leadership, and our job is to tie a ribbon around the good work that all of you do and help show it off on the national level. We have worked hard to be responsive to your needs, and in particular, um, we work to make sure that you have the research and data you need to help make the case for how art works and how it succeeds. Let me give you one brief example uh, from an arts education report that we just released. James Catterall, uh, who's an academic and a respected one, used four longitudinal databases to take a look at the relationship between arts education and students' overall academic and life achievements. The results were amazing. In fact, they wouldn't even be believable if they weren't confirmed by the data. Um, but what, what he found is that students from low socioeconomic backgrounds who had high level of arts engagement uh, in and out of school had higher GPAs than the average GPAs of students from all socioeconomic backgrounds. Think about what that means. That's a, that is a shocking and, and, and amazing finding. These high arts low SES students also had higher graduation rates than their cohort and were more likely than other members of their cohort to enroll in bachelor's programs and to receive mostly A's in college. They volunteered at higher rates than the average of, of, of students from all SES backgrounds. They were much more likely to read more, watch TV less, join student government, and work on student newspapers and yearbooks. High arts, low SES students, also end up with more professionally oriented college majors and careers. Now we all know that the, re the reason to provide arts education 
is to expose students to the arts. But all of these ancillary benefits are pretty impressive and also pretty important when you're trying to make the case to a besieged school, school leader uh, who is being asked to pay attention to multiple priorities. We are working hard on disseminating these findings, and I hope I can count on each of you to help, them, uh, to help us move them forward. Thanks so much, and I look forward to seeing you throughout the year. Thanks.